Hello everybody, this is The Last Raider. We are back with another video. And today, we're going to be looking at something positive for once. And I'm going to be talking about this for a little bit. Uh, so bear with me, I hope you guys will listen, and uh, listen to some positivity for once. But here at The Bleeding Fool, Gina Carano Strikes Back reveals new film project and Hollywood agent. Now, for those who don't know, Gina Carano... I don't know how you don't know, Gina Carano ended up getting fired from Lucasfilm, and uh, she ended up losing her Hollywood agent at the same time. Um, what has happened now is she has teamed up with Ben Shapiro, and she's doing what, her and Ben are doing what I have said needs to be done uh, for years. I, I've made this statement, you know, you cannot take on Hollywood on Hollywood's terms. But let's jump into the article here so you can see what's going on. Less than 48 hours after Gina Carano was fired by Lucasfilm after some controversial social media posts. Described by Lucasfilm as abhorrent, the Mandalorian actress has just announced she is teaming up with conservative commentator Ben Shapiro for a new movie project that will run counter to the Hollywood left. In a statement announce it, announcing the new film, Carano calls the collaboration an answered prayer following her very public cancellation from the hit Disney Plus series, following the controversial Instagram post below. And this is what she basically put down. Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where the Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? And I tell people a lot of times, uh, on, a, on a different note here, I tell people a lot of times to go read some of Hitler's speeches, and you will, ever, there's a couple of them, I think there's like three, where you will run into rhetoric that is, if you've been listening to the left talk about critical race theory and um, systemic racism, everything that they have talked about runs almost word for word parallel with what Hitler was talking about. The difference is they're referring to whites where he was referring to Jews. So, I mean, history is repeating itself right now in the United States. I'm going to tell people that right now. You are seeing a re repetition of what happened in Germany is now happening in the United States at this moment. They are now blaming, and there's a group of people within the government that are blaming white people for all the woes that is going on to everyone else. The reason being is because someone wants to take power. And, and Hitler was not just a racist. He used the racism to achieve power. He separated people. And you've got these people claiming, oh, you know, all these other people are Nazis and whatnot. They're, they're playing by Hitler's rules. Know what they are. Call them what they are. They are leftist Nazis. Is all I know what to say to them. Because someone's already took neo-Nazi. But anyway, let's continue on. Honestly, I really I really don't have a problem with this post because, secondly, also, I'm a Jew. And this is what happened. This is an, I'm also a historical guy who likes history. This is what happened. Okay? You make the population hate a group of people. You dehumanize them to the point where they don't view them as a human. And when you don't view a person as human, they're not your equal and you can do what you want with them. Uh, it's the same mentality that enabled slavery, same mentality that enabled genocide, it's the same mentality that allowed Jim Crow in this country. Okay? You, demonize, you dehumanize a person to the point where you view them as an animal, and then you can start viewing them as property. You can start viewing them as worthless. You can start viewing them as expendable. That's how this nonsense works. And Gina Carano putting this out there is actually a fair, is a truthful statement. She's simply pointing a, pointing out a historical fact in this country. But let's continue on. From Deadline, the Daily Wire is helping make one of my dreams. This is from Gina Carano. The Daily Wire is helping make one of my dreams to develop and produce my own film come true. I cried out and my prayer was answered. I am sending out a direct message of hope to everyone living in fear of cancellation by a totalitarian mob. I have only just begun to use my voice, which is now freer than ever before. I hope it inspires others to do the same. They can't cancel us if we don't let them. And that, this is the thing. I have said this for quite a while. There's a reason why I say you don't need to go to Marvel. 
you don't need to go to DC to make your comics. This is why I've also said you don't need to be looking to Disney and many others. I, I, let me tell you something. The good things that we have seen with The Mandalorian were not the result of Disney. They are the result of Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni. They have been trying tooth and nail to save a franchise within Hollywood. And I am here to tell people right now that despite the incredible fight that those two men have put up, they are failing. Because the system is geared against their creativity. You are not going to go to Hollywood and be creative. Something that a lot of people don't know about me, I, I, do, I do carpentry. Okay, I do some construction work, I do carpentry. Go around work on people's homes. You'd be amazed at who you meet when you get in homes. And I met a woman whose son-in-law is actually one of the guys that makes decision that creates ideas and makes decisions on The Bachelor. And she mentioned to me, we were talking about Hollywood because I was younger back then. And I was talking about, you know, I had these ideas. She said, I would give you those ideas. She said, but I'm going to tell you something right now. If you go to Hollywood, you have to sacrifice a lot. She said, you almost have to give up your soul. She said, my son-in-law has told me multiple times. There are times when he wants to look at the execs and tell them this is not what the people want. But in order to keep his job, he has to keep his mouth shut. He has to violate and not talk about what he knows is right. Because the people that are in charge, they want things to go their way. They have an agenda, and most of it's political. <clears throat> you have to understand that. You cannot go to Hollywood and change Hollywood from the inside. It is designed to stop anyone from doing that. Because Hollywood, you've got to remember, the SJWs that control Hollywood, the leftists that control Hollywood, if you know anything about the history of Hollywood, you know that that's how they took over Hollywood. They came in from the inside. And any successful revolution, when it is done, does whatever it can to prevent the next revolution from overthrowing them. That's why people like Hitler, Mussolini, that's why Stalin, Mao, many others, they had lists of not just the people they were after, but the people that supported them. Uh, a good example of this was brown shirts. When the brown shirts ended up meeting the SS. You know, Hitler took full control of the parliament. He had absolute he had absolute control. He broke out the SS, which, you know, they had the black uniforms. They were the more militaristic wing of the Nazi party. And he broke out the, the SS. Well, the brown shirts outnumbered them. And the brown shirts went to Hitler and began to make concessions. They began to tell him, you promised this stuff. We are the people. We put you in power. We can take you down. The SS that night went in took the leader of the brown shirts, viciously beat and tortured the man until he admitted to homosexual acts, which back then in Germany were illegal. Then Hitler went in there and declared the entire party debunked. What did he do? He went after the guy that was in charge. Why? Because that dude led the first revolution that put him in charge. See how this works? So Hollywood has gone in there and made absolutely damn certain that you cannot change them from the inside because that's how they did it. They did a cultural revolution several decades ago. Back in the early 90s, they did a cultural revolution, which then ended up solidifying its power in the early 2000s. By doing this, they also understand how they got to power and they live in fear of that. So they've done everything they can on a paranoid level to prevent you, the average person, from going in there and changing it back to the way they want it, that to the way you want it to be, and to prevent them from having Hollywood run the way they want it. And like I said, you have to do something yourself. And this is where Ben Shapiro and uh, Gina Carano are doing what I think is the smarter move. Like I said, Dave Filoni and John Favreau, I think they're amazing. I think they're doing everything they can to save Hollywood, to save Star Wars. I don't think they're going to be successful in the long run. I think they were going to give. I think they've given us a good glimpse of what Star Wars could have been, and it's probably going to be a good template for a conservative group or a more 
let's just say pro-American company, if they ever get control of Star Wars, that's the Mandalorian, the first two seasons of the Mandalorian are going to be the template for making a better Star Wars in the end. Uh, Disney will eventually, in my opinion, they're go- they the problem with Disney is they do not have competition. When you have competition, you're going to see Disney falter very, very quickly. You're going to see them do some underhanded tactics too. By the way, reporting details how Miss Carano will develop, produce, and star in the upcoming film, which da- which the Daily Wire says will be released exclusively to its members first, as the company looks to bolster its entertainment division. Smart move. Details are being kept under wraps, but it will be produced as part of Daily Wire's partnership with Bone Tomahawk producer Dallas Sonier. That was Bone Tomahawk was actually a pretty decent movie, and his Bonfire Legend banner. We could not be more excited to be working with Gina Carano, an incredible talent, dumped by Disney and Lucasfilm for offending the authoritarian Hollywood left. This is what Daily Wire exists to do: provide an alternative, not just for consumers but for the creators who refuse to bow to the mob, said the Daily Wire co-founder Shapiro. We're eager to bring Gina's talent to Americans who love her. We're just as eager to show Hollywood that if they want to keep canceling those who think differently, they'll just be helping us build the X-Wing to take down their Death Star, he added. And that, that is a beautiful statement right there. I absolutely agree with that. Like I said, uh, you you got to build your own spaceship at this point. This is a, a concept done by... Uh, Richard Myers, a while back, he said, you know, we are building a spaceship. He finally gave up on working with other publishers and just simply became a publisher himself. And now you look at comics, comics are in a major revolution right now. The indie market is pushing. They are trying to build their own foothold. They are building a spaceship. They're building a platform off of planet Marvel and planet DC. Both those planets are about to explode. Okay. We are, we are now sending our comic book ideas off in a little spaceship to a new planet where they will bring joy and happiness to everyone else. And if those of you who have not caught the Superman analogy, I'm sorry, you haven't read enough comic books in your life. But anyway, continuing on. It was also announced that Gina Carano will now be rep- will now, is now <laughs> represented by Scott Carp. At the Syndicate, last month, the Daily Wire released its first feature film, Run, Hide, Fight, produced by Dallas Sonner under his Bonfire Legends banner. I guess that's about it from the post. I, But here's the thing. Like I said, this is a positive thing because I'm going to tell people right now, how many people, how many talented actors do you think in Hollywood have been kicked to the curb because they didn't have the right political beliefs. How much talent do you think is like, we've seen Gina Carano. She's talented as an actress. Uh, She's talented. She can do a lot of her own stunts. She can convey emotion. She can be different characters. Um, that is kind of that that is talent that we have been missing. Look at all the talent that's been canceled. I mean, can you imagine if Daily Wire could get Johnny Depp after his Amber Heard bullshit? Now, I know Johnny Depp may not be interested in working with a conservative. But when you've got somewhere else to go, we may see Johnny Depp starring in something from Daily Wire at some point. I, I honestly hope to see it at some point. I, I like Johnny Depp as an actor. He's played some he's played some awesome characters. Uh, I remember I watched Edward Scissorhands. It's not something that I, I particularly like. My wife, however, there are two major there are two roles that she loved to see Johnny Depp in. One was uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean, Captain Jack Sparrow. The other one was Sweeney Todd. She said. She said, you realize that Johnny Depp has a range when he can go from drunk pirate to the most psychotic, crazy dude you've ever seen in Sweeney Todd. My favorite one is when he is the uh, special agent in Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Just, damn, that is just a good show. That was just a good movie in my, just a good, you know, just popcorn flick. You just sit down and just eat popcorn and enjoy yourself <laughs> while, he, while he orders Antonio Banderas around <laughs> tells him what to do and when to do it 
But I, I like I like Johnny Depp as an actor, and I hope he gets to do more stuff. So so to Depp out here, we may not agree politically, but I hope, man, that you get to go out there, and I hope you get to be an artistic talent and an artistic heavyweight like you have been. Uh, there are other people, other actors. I mean, here's the thing. Hollywood, like I said, Hollywood right now has enjoyed an era of dominance. There has been no film crew, no one nowhere has been able to really step up and fight with them. And they are quickly seeing, because of cancel culture, they have canceled enough talent. And I've said this before, they've canceled enough talent out there. And you've got enough recurring talent that would never work in Hollywood, who will have their dreams dashed by the Hollywood leftist machine, that you could create your own counter Hollywood. Personally, I hope they do it somewhere in a state where, you know, it's it's pretty free. But when you have this competition, you got to remember, Hollywood has enjoyed this dominance and they've become fat. Their spears, their swords, everything they used for that revolution before have all rusted. The wood is rotten. The blades are tarnished and rusted. They're not sharp anymore. And they are facing a new country rising in entertainment that has already sharpened their steel. They have not just sharpened swords, they have more advanced weapons. They're not fat. They've been starved and they have, this is a, the new Hollywood that's going to come up is going to be forged in the fires of hell. And I don't mean that as an evil thing. I mean, that is the type of hardship that these new companies coming up, this new right Hollywood that's going to come up, this new American Hollywood coming up, they're going to be forged in hell. That's where they're going to learn to be tough. That's where they're going to learn to fight. That's where they're going to learn to be innovative, to be intelligent, to be strategic. They're going to learn all this in the most hostile environment possible. While Hollywood is fat on their ass and doesn't and it can barely get up and do anything. They can't make good movies. They're in the process of recycling all the old shit that they did back in the day. Talent like Dave Filoni and John Favreau expect them to be eventually kicked out of Hollywood because they're they're the guys that have been enabling Cara Dune and all this. They're eventually gonna be next. Because the woke left do not. They do not like something successful at all. They're going to have to go over them. There are two dudes that as far as they're concerned, the left is concerned. They're two white guys. They're going to be next on the chopping block. So the, my message to Ben Shapiro is put some money back and have an offer for those two men when they come off. Because they're going to be completely dashed. And many now here's the thing. Hollywood only has themselves to blame for this. Because as long as you give people nowhere to go, and this is the problem with Hollywood... They don't think, the left doesn't think of Sun Tzu. They look at Sun Tzu and they, they hate the concept of war, but they always want to fight one. They always want to start war with somebody, but they don't want to study how to, how to study how to wage it. What they're doing right now is they are destroying everybody and not giving them any way out. I did a video a while back on how the left has zero forgiveness, how they don't forgive anyone whatsoever. And I stated in that video, I said, you're going to have problems with this because when you give someone, no, when you don't give someone an out, they're going to make one. It's like Sun Tzu says, you don't put a person on, you don't put an enemy on death ground. You always give them an out in a direction you want them to go. They should have given Gina Carano an out. They should have given her a direction, thus they could have maintained control. Now, what has she done? She has fought to the death and she has now managed to beat her way out. She's committed to a breakout strategy, and now they have a problem over here that they don't control. They have a strong woman who they cannot control, who is now going to be making her own movies. She's probably going to be hiring more conservative talent, and they have just created a monster they cannot beat. They pushed people into hell, and now people are making a heaven out of hell. I mean, we're, 
honestly, if Ben Shapiro could get away with it, he should call his company Heaven, Outer Heaven Productions or something. <laughs> that would be pretty good, in my opinion. If you could get Hideo Kojima not to sue the shit out of you, which he probably wouldn't have too much of a problem if he did a decent Metal Gear movie. But anyway, folks, I'm the last Raider. Tell me what you think about the whole uh, Gina Carano starting her own movie. Do you think it's going to be uh, awesome? Do you think it's going to be meh? Personally, I think it's going to be a, what we've been missing in this country is a good popcorn flick. That's what we're going to get. We're going to get a really, really good popcorn flick that's going to be considered a cult classic for the ages. Anyway, I'm The Last Raider. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hope you enjoyed this positive video today. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.